Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to another Adobe XD Masterclass. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior XD Evangelist here at Adobe, and I hope you're all doing well on this Friday afternoon. If you are tuning in live here on Behance, let me know in the chat who you are and where you're tuning in from. We've got Wade and Gareth and Cornell, and great to see all of you. Hope you're well. I uh, hope you're excited for the weekend. And of course, another XD Masterclass. Masterclass number 75. can't believe we've already tackled 75 of these Masterclasses. And I think today's going to be a good one. We're going to be kicking off a brand new project that might extend a few weeks possibly. And then eventually at the end of it, I'm hoping to be able to release this file as a UI kit or a project file, which is going to be really cool. Because I know a lot of you on Twitter and on Facebook and all the different platforms I've been asking for in-depth project files that we can distribute. And we're working through all the, you know, asset legalities and all that stuff, but we're going to make it happen. Definitely in 2022. I promise you on that. All right. So let's go ahead and hop over to my screen. Here we go. And hey, Megan, great to see you. Awesome. All right. So today, what we're going to be tackling is we are going to be starting the process of exploring what Blockbuster might look and feel like in 2021. Rest in peace, Blockbuster. Although there is still one store and I think they have some sort of partnership with a streaming platform. Their logo's there somewhere. I don't know the exact details, but I did post this on Twitter a few hours ago. If you're not following me on Twitter, definitely go do that. Twitter pixelates video, so it may look a bit strange, but here's kind of a preview of what we're gonna be tackling over the next few weeks. We'll get to some of it today and then definitely a lot next week and probably the week after as well. So, and if anyone has suggestions or questions throughout this stream, definitely throw them in the chat. I will be taking a peek from time to time. All right, Cornell saying, I just watched your new video on YouTube about video editing and X. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna be covering that probably in next masterclass. But if you do wanna, see a, you know, a fun way of video editing, trimming and splicing clips together in XD, youtube.com slash Howard Pinsky. Uh, that was a fun video to put together using the end of playback trigger. So definitely go ahead and check that out. And there's a bit of a preview of what that looks like actually on Dribbble. So if you're making landing pages or things like that, and you want to take a few clips and kind of splice them together and trim out certain parts of it, you can kind of do something like this directly in Adobe XD. So if you don't no video editing software or don't want to use it, you can definitely do some things in XD. Hey, Umicorn, great to see you. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and hop over to Adobe XD and we're going to get going. So now, because this particular design is really focused on the web and a TV experience, we're going to start off with a 1920 by 1080 pixel artboard. Possibly later down the line, we may you know, dive into the world of mobile for an application like this. But for the most part, we're going to be focusing on TV and web, which is why we want to go nice and large and 1920 by 1080, making sure that we keep that 16 by nine aspect ratio. All right, so here we go. We're going to start off with the splash screen. You know, when you go to Netflix or Hulu or any of those other platforms, usually see and you're not logged in, usually see this kind of welcome screen, gives you a very brief overview of what the platform is, maybe a way to sign up or enter your email address and things like that. Hey, Ali from Pakistan, great to see you. And Tomas, great to see you as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start building out that page. And, you know, of course, one of the big things when you're working on a project like this is branding and logos. Now, in terms of actual branding, you know, we Blockbuster is a thing, right? It's been a thing for a while and they have this very iconic red and red. Where did I even get red from? Probably I probably looked at this and it's like red, um, blue and yellow color scheme. And we're going to definitely can reduce the back. OK, hold on. Reduce the background music. There we go. Some of the songs are a little bit louder than others. So maybe that one was just spiking a bit. Hopefully that's a bit better. All right. So, yeah, Blockbuster has this, you know, blue and yellow color scheme that we've all kind of learned to love over the years. And we're definitely going to be keeping some of that throughout this process. Now, the logo itself, it was very blocky. 
And as I was exploring what a new logo for Blockbuster could potentially look like, I definitely explored using basically just this. But I want to go in a bit of a different direction because I think, you know, it's modern. There's a lot of serif typefaces and these like you know, fancier typefaces floating around these days. I might want to go in that direction. So let's go ahead and hop back to XD. And what I want to start to do is really create a background that's going to be striking when a user lands on this page. So I think for something like this, what we might want to do is maybe start with a gradient. It's not going to be too apparent once we actually add some elements on top of it, but it might give us a nice starting point. Hey, Rebecca, and hey, Mayor, great to see you, and Bruce, great to see you as well. All right, so I'm going to hop into my color picker, and we're going to start with maybe a linear gradient, and maybe we'll go diagonally, so top left to bottom right. doesn't have to be perfect, but somewhere in that range there. And then in terms of the color, of course, we could do a blue and a yellow to match the aesthetic of the original logo. But I think we might, you know, we can start with the blue, actually in the other side, start with the blue at the top left corner. And then maybe at the bottom, we'll transition to more of like a, maybe a darker purple. And that'll give us a really nice base to start off with. Again, we're going to be adding elements on top of this, like movie posters, maybe a video possibly. So the gradient won't be too strong, but it's still going to be there as our as our base. So we have our gradient and our artboard looking pretty good. And I think on the basic level, what we might want to do is maybe put some movies in the background that are just kind of there, but they also fade into the background. We want to be careful because we don't want to put too much back there. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult to see the content on top of it. So I'm going to grab my rectangle shortcut key R and maybe we'll start off by creating a rectangle that's gonna house one of the movies. And I'm thinking, you know, we might have maybe five or six going across and maybe three rows down. Now, the quick way of doing this is to, with one rectangle selected, we can create a repeat grid right here at the top right-hand corner or Command or Control R and my button's here somewhere. Boop, there we go. So I'm going to drag out a few going across. So we have one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to do six going across. We may not see all of them, but it'll give us some a you know, little bit of breathing room here. And I'll drop this. Maybe eight might be too squishy. Sixteen, possibly. We'll start with that. That, and then we'll do three rows going down the artboard. Now you might be wondering, you know, why do we need this additional row down at the bottom? if we really can't see it. And that'll become apparent in just a moment. The TLDR, we're gonna end up rotating this. And when we do rotate something like this, we're gonna need some extra content down here at the bottom, you know, for the movies that are kind of poking in. Now, in terms of getting actual content into this repeat grid or, you know, into the movie's experience, let me actually just bring this up because it's not matching. There we go. 16 perfect there are a few ways to do this of course like we've uh, explored many times in the past what we can do is we can grab a bunch of images like this and boop, pop them into place right very simple but in this case we really want to focus on movies so this is a perfect opportunity to explore a plugin now if we hop down here to the bottom left hand corner we have our plugins panel and I do have a bunch of plugins already installed. And if you don't have any plugins or you want to install more, definitely hit the plus button at the top right hand corner to discover plugins. The one we're going to be using today is called Movie Posters. Now, one big caveat of this plugin, I don't know when the last time it was updated. It works pretty well, but it does not work inside of a repeat grid, right? So if you have a repeat grid selected, it's not going to work. And if you do select an individual element in the repeat grid and run the plugin, it's going to apply the same picture to all the cells, which is not ideal. So hopefully one day they can update this plugin. But in the meantime, I will go ahead and just ungroup this grid. And just to keep things organized, I will place this into a regular group and call this movies. And now what we can do is we can actually dive in here and select all of these rectangles here. And then hopping back over to our plugins, I'm gonna click on the generate movie posters option right here. And what we're able to do now is we're able to enter a year that we want to pull from. And also we can filter by genre or we can just keep it blank to do all genres. So, you know, it's 2021. So we'll just go ahead and do that. You definitely want to keep this 
a little bit modern. If we were designing Blockbuster of the past, it would be like, I don't know, 1995 or whenever that was. Um, so I'll go ahead and enter 2021 and generate posters. There we go. Now we have a bunch of movies from 2021, which looks amazing, right? But of course, it doesn't look great. The movie posters look wonderful, but in terms of a landing page or a splash page, we have some problems, right? One, we're not going to be able to see any of the content on top of it. Two, we want to see some of that gradient behind. So there are a few things we can do. Number one, like I mentioned before, I might want to rotate this just to give it a bit of style. And I held down my shift key to rotate by 15 degrees. And then two, we can start exploring what, you know, maybe a blend mode could look like. So for this case, I would probably say something like either overlay looks interesting. It's a little bit more vibrant than I would like. Soft light would probably be pretty good. Hard light would be very harsh, but this will allow us to really drop that opacity to, I don't know, somewhere around 20%. And these posters kind of nicely blend in with that background gradient that we created. Of course, you can do the same thing with soft light and adjust the opacity. But what I like about hard light is it, it keeps some of that detail of the original poster, right? You can kind of see the difference. Here's hard light and here's soft light. So soft light is much, well, softer, right? And hard light, you have a lot of those details and then dropping that opacity gives you a really nice effect. Overlay, like I mentioned before, it's a little bit too vibrant. So I think we're gonna stick with hard light at 20%. Now we could keep it like this and it looks okay, right? But I think, you know, in 2021, kind of want to get a little bit fancier with this particular design. And I think we could possibly add in a video to this background. Now, you might be wondering, we have these movie posters, how are we gonna add a video on top of that or even behind that? I have an idea. Let's go ahead and grab the rectangle and we're going to draw out a shape across the entire artboard. You don't have to do this, but I find it easier just so we can you know, take the video and pop it directly inside of that rectangle. And then back in Finder, I have this video right here of this, you know, flickering television. Now it is an old school television, which I think is kind of interesting because it kind of brings that whole blockbuster vibe full circle, right? We have a bit of modern, we have a bit of old. It's an interesting balance. So I'm gonna grab this video and boop, pop it directly in. And we may want to also adjust it just a little bit. We'll see how things look, but I can always dive in here and make this bigger, make it smaller. Something like that looks kind of interesting, right? Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. And, you know, kind of thinking out loud a bit, what I might want to do is right in the middle here, I might want to use this area to display the content that we want to serve to users. You know, the logo, the text, an email field, a button, that sort of thing. And this will kind of give us a nice blank space to work with, which is great. We're now saying you convinced me to watch Squid Games. Oh boy. It's a, it's a show. It's, I loved it. I thought it was great. And definitely if you're going to watch it and you haven't watched it yet, watch the Korean version. Don't watch with the dubs in English. It's just not as good. The Korean version is much better. All right. So we have this in place and it's looking pretty good. I'm going to name this video. Now, of course, we can't really see the, the what's it called? The movie posters in the background. We definitely want to be able to see that. Now, what I think would be interesting, there are a few ways we can do this, right? We can place the movie posters on top. It looks interesting, right? We're missing that gradient in the background. So we can also adjust the blend mode of the television back there. Looks okay, right? But it kind of looks weird when the movie posters actually move outside of the television. So what would be kind of interesting is to actually place the movie posters inside the television. And that's where a mask can come into play. So what we want to do is basically want to create a mask that looks like this screen. And there are a few ways to do it with the pen tool, the rectangle tool, so on and so forth. Let's try the pen tool and see what we can do with that. So I'm gonna just grab the pen tool, shortcut key P, draw something like this. I'm not too worried about the points. I will adjust them shortly. So I'm just gonna go around and kind of trace out the screen of this television. Did anyone, I would, I'd be curious, anyone in the chat have a television like this when they were younger? I certainly did. 
but I'd be curious to see because I know a lot of there's a lot of uh, younger people watching these streams from time to time. All right, so now I'm going to go through and just adjust this a little bit. I can hold down my Alter Option key to adjust one point at a time. Just like this. There we go. Move that up a little bit. I can double click to add a curve on this side. That's looking a little bit better. So we have the basic shape of this television, right? It's not perfect, but that's totally okay because we have so many blend modes going on that um, you know we're not gonna really notice too many imperfections. But I'll just go through and that looks pretty good. And if I go ahead and fill this in, again, not perfect. We have a few areas up here that probably need a little bit of help, but for the most part, it will do. All right. Now, like I mentioned, we might want to use this as a mask. So I'm going to make sure that the mask is selected. And also I'm going to reveal the movie posters and I'm going to select both of those layers, making sure that that mask layer that we just created is on top of the movie posters. And then under the object menu, we'll go down to mask with shape. That will take anything that's selected underneath the topmost layer, which in this case is the white television screen mask and place it inside of it. So anything outside will be nicely hidden, which is great. Now, we had a lot of movie posters, but we can only really see like four of them right now. So once I have this in place, I can dive in here, select the movies, and now I can shrink them down a little bit, just so we can see a little bit more, right? Has anyone seen the new Clifford movie? It looks kind of terrifying, but we might, you know, watch it with our daughter at some point, but it looks kind of weird. And I don't know, some movies are just not meant to be remade as live action. And that looks like one of them, but I could be wrong. I'd love to hear what all of you think. All right, so we have this in place and it's looking pretty good. Now, of course we can continue to dive in and make some changes, but I didn't even show you the movie yet. So if we dive into the video mask, I'm gonna make sure that's set to play automatically. And then inside the heads up display, I want to make sure that loop playback is turned on, just like that. Imasha saying, Howard's Twitter post made me create the animated business card. Of yes, I, I did see that. And um, that's amazing that so many of you are actually, uh, you know, creating things based on some of my posts, which is great. So we have this in place. And now if I launch the preview, there we go. It's an interesting effect, right? Don't know if I love it, but I think once we actually start adding some additional content on top of this, it might kind of all come together. Now, the biggest thing that we're, we're gonna wanna add on top of this is the logo. Now, like I mentioned, the Blockbuster logo, it's very timeless, right? And I definitely don't wanna just take this logo and pop it on a modern day design. I want something a little bit new and exciting. Now, when I was exploring what that could potentially look like, I was going through a lot of different typefaces and I was browsing Adobe fonts and there's a ton of really interesting and funky and modern and, you know, serif typefaces. There's some great font packs that you can look through. You know, this one here is the uh, Get Folks Together font pack and has some interesting uh, typefaces, right? Blenny, uh, Blenny Black is one that I definitely explored. Barracada. And, you know, this one here is the Colorful Web Banners font pack. Got some cool ones as well. And you can type in something like Blockbuster and you can see exactly what it's going to look like once it's, you know, in a project, which is nice. So if I go ahead and grab the text tool and type out Blockbuster, let me make this nice and large and I will switch the color to white. Now, this is obviously very basic. Helvetica, probably not gonna use that, right? Now, the original logo was all caps. And I thought about doing that, but I think to really separate it from that original, we might want to go in a bit of a different direction. So let's explore maybe what some of the, those stylistic type typefaces may look like. There were two that I really kind of liked a little bit. Oh No Blaze Face. It's a wonderful name for a typeface, uh, but that's available on Adobe Fonts. Oh No Blaze Face. And they have, you know, different values for, um, you know, kind of weights and points and things like that, which is an interesting option. There's also in the same kind of family, there's Oh No Fat Face. I don't know who comes up with these names, but they're wonderful. And this could be an interesting option. 
definitely a little bit more stylistic, so I'm probably not going to go in that direction. There was uh, Blenny Black that I mentioned uh, earlier when we were looking at Adobe fonts. And then there was also this Mighty Slab typeface. Now, what's really interesting about this Mighty Slab typeface is it also comes with these variations that let you create kind of shadows that make it look like it's kind of protruding, which is really interesting, right? Blockbuster kind of has that feel already, and I think it might be nice to bounce off of that. So what we're gonna do, you know, I would love to hear in the chat which one of these you think looks kind of nice. I really like Blenny, but because the Mighty Slab typeface has, uh, you know, these different variations, which I'll show you in just a moment, I think it could be kind of fun to go in that direction. Uh, someone's asking, while create a button, what width and height will you give to look good on all screen sizes? That, that's a big question. So it really depends. I mean, in general, if you're designing for mobile, for example, you know, Apple and iOS and Google and Android have definitely have guidelines on that. And something like 45 pixels high is, I believe, sort of standard when it comes to buttons, but it's really gonna depend on what your screen is. I don't think there's a one size fits all, but you know, Drew is point, uh, pointing out 24, 32, 40, 44, you know, in that range is pretty good, but it really comes down to what else is on your screen. A lot of factors go into it, but definitely read up on the guidelines of the devices that you're designing for. All right, uh, Cornell saying the second one looks great. Yeah, this one's interesting. It's definitely a lot more stylistic than some of the other ones. But um, someone says the first one looks great. Bruce says three or four. Everyone else is the first one. Yeah, so I'm gonna, we're gonna run with the fourth one for now. I may go back and make some changes to it, but I wanna show you what this Mighty Slab typeface can do. So we have you know, one text layer here. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna duplicate it. Command Control D. And we're gonna bring in all three colors. So white, blue, and yellow. So if I go ahead and change this to maybe a blue, that blue is pretty nice, and we can definitely tweak this color a little bit later. And if I duplicate it one more time, we're gonna switch over to our yellow. We're gonna make it nice and vibrant right in that range there, right? Now, what we're gonna do is we wanna layer these. So the white typeface is gonna go at the top, and then we're going to have the blue behind it, and then we're gonna have the yellow right behind that, right? And just to keep things a little bit cleaner, let's delete these, all right? So what we want to do now is we want to go into the one right below the white typeface and want to switch the variation to one of the other ones. So they have two, three, and four. So if we go two, we're going to have this, you know, nice little border around it. If we do three, we're going to have a border plus a little bit of a protrusion, right? Right, right in that area there. So it almost looks like it's a block, right? Kind of fancy. Now, the problem that we're running into right now is because we've used that blue and purple gradient in the background, it kind of gets lost. And that's why I added the third text layer, that uh, yellow one right behind it. And here we can switch over to the fourth variation, which will give us an additional uh, you know, protrusion. So we have our white, we have our blue, and we have our yellow. And I might want to just tweak this just a little bit to add a touch of orange in there, right? And if I go ahead and group this, I'll just call this logo and I'll place this somewhere in this area here. Oops, I think I dropped the opacity. Yes, I did. There we go, right? So we have our logo. Now, now that this is done, just to make my life a little bit easier as I'm designing, I might wanna just you know select all these and convert them into paths or you know I can convert it into a component, which I'm definitely gonna do. I may also create one more version that is just the B, right? So if I dive in here, type out B and then B and then B, just so we can have a, you know, a very quick logo that we can put at the top of a navigation bar and so on and so forth, right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and convert these to paths so I can very easily resize them. And maybe just to get a bit fancier, what we can do is maybe add a bit of a border just on this version here, right? And we'll see what that looks like. We can definitely make some changes a little bit later on. But I'm thinking, you know, this one here might be at the top of a navigation bar, so we might want that extra border around it or not. Who knows? We'll see, right? 
So I'll go ahead and place this off to the side. And then we're going to run with this one, which again, I'm going to invert and we're good to go. All right. So now that we have our logo in place, it might be a little bit too large, but I can very easily shrink that down. What we want to do now is place some text underneath it so that when a user lands on this page, they know what they're doing, right? They know what services they offer, what the main benefits are, and so on and so forth. Kind of like Twitch style. Oh, that's a, that's a good point. So Twitch does have that like protruding, I think it's purple. So if you go on their website and you hover over some of the thumbnails of the uh, live streams, I think it protrudes a little bit. It's a good point, Cornell. So right below, I want to put, you know, a very quick tagline of maybe what the service offers. So with the text tool, I can either click or I can click and drag to define that width. And we'll type out something like bottomless movies. Or in, we'll, we'll continue this in a second. But as you're seeing, we have a bit of a problem, right? We definitely don't want to use this typeface. And in general, even you know the first variation, you probably don't want to use something like this if you're going to get much smaller. So if I do something like 32, when you're using fancier typefaces and um, you know serif typefaces and things like that. The smaller it gets, the harder it is to read. So for this, we might want to go to something a little bit more traditional. You know, Museo Sans is that I've been using quite often. And I'll just switch it over to white. And I might want to bump up the weight so it's nice and in our face. And now I can continue typing out whatever it is that we're doing, right? Movies, TV shows, live entertainment, and more. And I'll probably want this on maybe two lines, so I'll move this out a little bit. Something like that. Perfect. Maybe I'll make this a little bit large. Great. And then down below, we might want one more text line and then po possibly an email field, right? To sign up, or you can have buttons as well. So if I duplicate this downwards, you might want to do something like binge your first month completely free. Now, this line here, we might want to make a few changes. You know, we probably don't want the same size and weight as the line above, just so they don't get mixed up. So I'm going to drop this maybe down to 700. I might want to drop the size quite a bit, maybe even by 10. And then maybe just to really emphasize completely free, we can bump this up in weight and also maybe set it to italic, something like that. All right. And then finally, right down below, email field. Now there's a lot of different ways you can design an email field. It really, whoops, it really depends on the direction you want to take for your particular service. Some of them look pretty good as, you know, straight rectangles like this. And some of them you might want to round it out if it's more more of a fun experience. And I might want to do that, right? Just round it out a little bit, have a little bit of fun with it. And then on the inside, maybe right about here, might want to put the button. So I'm going to duplicate this, bring this in a little bit. And just to make sure my colors are consistent, I might want to continue to use the blues and the yellows from this logo. So I'm going to actually hop over to my document assets and just add all of these just like that. And then for this button, we're going to set it to blue. I'm going to bring it on in a little bit. Something like that. And if you hold down your Alter Option key, you can hover and then, you know, get exact spacing. So I'm going to bump this over by two. It might be a little bit too long, so I'm going to bring it on in. And then in the middle, we'll type out something like Let's Go. And for this one, we might want to switch it over, maybe Display. We'll see what that looks like. Maybe a little bit too large still. Drop it down to about 16. That could work. All right. And then over here, we definitely want to let users know what exactly this field is for. Now, there are two ways to do that, right? One, we can type out exactly what users should be entering in here. In this case, email address. Now I'm thinking this very dark black text uh, uh, text layer is probably a little bit too dark. Someone's saying, I look tired. I'm, I feel pretty good. 
Uh, I know I always have like bags under my eyes, but that's just normal for me. Um, but yeah, I feel pretty good. So we have this text layer here. I think it's a little bit too dark. We'll take a look when we actually launch the preview. But what we also want to do is add possibly um, an icon, something like an envelope or mail or email. I know we have, what is the message maybe? Aha, here we go. So we have this little envelope right here and I'm gonna paste it in. Let's put it about 24 from the left. We'll see what that looks like. You know, this color right over here, it's not black and it's not even gray. It's kind of like a, a darker gray with a little bit of blue in it, just to kind of pull in some of the blue that we are using throughout this project. So I'm gonna make sure to add this to my colors as well. And I want to apply it to this icon. Hmm. I mean, it's not bad, right? This very bold text layer right here where it says email address, it's not bad. It's just not traditional, right? Whenever you see a text field that it, you know has placeholder text, you rarely see something this bold. So in this case, we might want to drop it down to 500 possibly. Yeah maybe 700, and then maybe drop the opacity a touch. Just a little bit, just so users know that this is a placeholder. You don't wanna to go too far down. Cause if you go something like this, it's gonna be very difficult to see for some people. So something like 60% potentially could work, or you can keep it at 100%, um, you know, just to make sure that it matches with the icon. But for the most part, it looks okay. I think it'll, it'll do. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and select, actually I'm gonna select the, the button first. I'm gonna pop that into a group. And then I'm going to select all these elements. And this will be email. Is that a squircle? It's kind of a squircle. It's, it almost looks like a squircle. Do I have this squircle plugin installed? Oh, I do not. I had to reinstall XD. Every time I test out a, a, you know, a future build of XD, I reinstall it. So, you know, I forget to install some plugins again. All right. That's looking pretty good. I might want to space these out a little bit. And then if I select all this information here, make sure it's centered. And just like that, we have the start of our splash page, right? Museo Sands is my favorite. Yeah, it's a pretty good, uh, it's a pretty good, uh, what's it called? A pretty good typeface. That's what it is. I was reading Cornell's question as well. Can you make a video clip semi-transparent in XD? So you can adjust the opacity, but if you're talking about like alpha masks and things like that, it does not support alpha masks at the moment. It supports uh, MP4s and MP4s do not support alpha masks. So opacity is pretty much as far as you're gonna get at the moment. All right. now. There are a few more things we might want to add to this splash page, including maybe a button at the top right to log in if you already have an account, pretty helpful. And then down at the bottom, we might want maybe a bit of a preview of what content might be available. So Tomas is saying it's not traditional, but since there is not the naming for that input field, it's okay to use bold for good usability. That's true. So it really depends on um, your project. Yasser is saying, I'm asking about Lottie animation. Uh, yeah, so if you have a question about Lottie or anything else, video, whatever, definitely throw it in the chat. Uh, if I missed your question, uh, definitely throw it back in the chat so I can see it. So again, yeah, at the top right, we might want a button so that users can very easily log in. This could be another opportunity to bring in some colors and, you know, um, explore components and hover states. So if I go ahead and create a button, right up here. And this goes back to the question earlier about button size. If I were to make this, you know, 24, way too small, right? So we want to go a little bit larger. You know, I would say 40, 45 or 44. It's probably the smallest I would go for something like this. I would go a little bit larger, maybe about 48 for the height. And the width of the button really depends on what's going to go inside of it. And in this case, something like log in. And I'm going to go ahead and set blue. And maybe we'll set it to, we'll try Museo Sans display. We'll see what that looks like. Might be a bit too bold, but we'll see.
that could work. And then, you know, it's a, it's a nice looking button. We don't have to get too fancy with it, but it could be kind of fun to start introducing some stylistic hover effects for these particular buttons. So in its default state, which we'll create in just a moment, you might want it to look just like this, right? Nothing too crazy. But in its hover state, we might want to bring in some of those colors. So if I duplicate this shape, I'm going to go ahead and set it to blue, and I'm going to duplicate it again and set it to yellow. And what we're going to do is very similar to the logo. We might want to kind of pop some of those out. Now, again, initially I want it to look just like this. So if I select all these elements here, I'm going to pop them into a group, call this button login, and then I can create a component either in my document assets where I was previously over to the right in the properties inspector or the commander control K shortcut. And this will be our main component. So any changes we want to make to all of our instances, which will might be on you know other screens, we'll want to make on this component. Now, if I go ahead and press the plus button one more time, I can create a hover state, which is automatically going to be wired up as indicated by that lightning icon. And now I can dive in here and make some changes. So I might want to just pull out these a little bit just to add a bit of a bevel on there. Little protrusion, right? I can go, I can bring it down as well, but I think this looks kind of fun. Very subtle. But if we go back to our hover state, it could work, right? It's not too fancy, but it's fun. I think we'll keep it. All right, uh, let's see. Yes, sir, I think had a question. I make, made an animation in After Effects, my start animation with an empty screen, and when the animation is finished. Okay, so what Yasser is saying is that when you have an animation in, a uh, Lottie animation in XD and it finishes, it goes back to the first frame of the Lottie animation, especially if looping is not turned on. That is, I don't know, it, I don't think it's a bug. It's that, that was the way it was designed initially. The team is looking for feedback. So definitely tweet at Adobe XD on that. Uh, we've heard both sides. You know, some people want it to go back to the first frame. Some people want the animation to stop at the last frame. Now, at the what you can do now is create a, a new state with the last frame, essentially, like a freeze frame of the last frame, and then have the, use the end of playback trigger to automatically transition to that last state. But that's how it was designed at the moment. Definitely let the team know. I will pass that information on uh, to the team as well, but send them a tweet just so that they know exactly what's what your thoughts are on that. All right, so we have our login button at the top, which looks fun. And then again, like I mentioned down at the bottom, we might want one area that shows, you know, maybe some currently streaming movies or TV shows. I'm going to draw out a rectangle down at the bottom. I don't want it too far up because then it's going to distract from the main elements. I kind of want it just peeking up a little bit. And for this one, I might want to go nice and dark. And then maybe possibly to bring in more of that color. I don't know how I feel about this, but we might, you know, maybe blue and then yellow, just like we did before. And pop this up a little bit and then pop this up. Possibly, maybe. One thing you have to think about, if you're really working with color, in an experience like this, you don't want it to look like the color vomited all over the place, right? It's nice to have these pops of color like the blues and yellows in some places like the logo and maybe even the button on hover. But when you start adding these highlights everywhere, it gets a little bit distracting. And you know, this area down here might be one of those cases. It might be too much, but we'll see how things go, right? We shall see. And then I might want something like currently streaming. And for this, we definitely want it a little bit larger. I'm gonna go for something, let's try 32. We'll see what that looks like. And you know, we have to start thinking about what our titles and our section headers are going to look like. Are they gonna be lowercase? Are they gonna be title case? Are they gonna be all uppercase? Which could be interesting. Are they gonna be, you know, a certain color? All these things come into uh, you know play when you are starting to create projects like this. So we're gonna start with this. I might end up bringing this back to, you know, a lighter color, just like white, but we'll see, because there's a lot of color going on, right? I'll pop it right about there. 
And then down below, we might want to bring in some more movie posters. So like we did earlier, I will create one of them. You know, I'll round out the corners just a little bit to give a touch of style. And then repeat grid. Maybe we'll have maybe four going across, maybe five. Five could work. There we go. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the Movie Posters plugin does not support repeat grids at the moment, so I'm going to ungroup these. And then let's enter 2020 instead of 2021. There we go. Now I've got some movie posters. Now what I might do for these is add a very slight border, just in case some of the movie posters are on the darker side, they might blend in with that background container. So if I add a, a border, I'm gonna set it to white, but then drop the opacity so it's nice and subtle. Somewhere around 10% could work. You can potentially add a dr uh, drop shadow as well. Something like, let's do the uh, Spider-Man one. If I do a drop shadow here, what I would probably do is keep the Y value fairly low and then just really bump up the blur and then up the opacity just a little bit until it starts very subtly separating from that background. You wanna keep your shadows very subtle, but I think the border will do. All right. There we go. I'm gonna make sure to group all of this. Now, for the sake of this particular prototype, I'm not too concerned about, you know, revealing whatever is down here at the moment. So I'm not gonna set up scrolling right now, but if you wanted to, you can always select the artboard, drag it down, and then make sure that you have scrolling set up. So over within the properties inspector, make sure it's set to vertical, and then you can go ahead and scroll down, right? Maybe later in a future class, we will explore what the rest down here might look like. But for now, I just kind of want it peeking up from the bottom just so there's something down there and there we go all right so we've gone ahead and basically created our splash screen there might be some more you know information that we can put on here there are definitely some design tweaks that we can make you know the email field might be a little bit too small so we can bring that out a little bit make sure some of these things line up a little bit better but for now i think it's looking pretty good what i want to do is you know move on and start exploring what the home screen could look like we only have about 10 minutes. So, you know, we're probably gonna just start blocking things out just a touch. And then next week, we'll probably really dive into what that home experience looks like. So, artboard tool, shortcut key A, I am going to create one more new artboard and this will be home. So this is gonna be the experience, what it's gonna look like once you've actually logged in. And you know, of course, speaking of logging in, we can take this a step further and build out what that login experience looks like, whether it's, you know, a little, modal that pops up over here that kind of remains on the same screen you can use an overlay or another state within your component actually you know what let's do that let's do that instead of doing the home screen today we'll save that for next week so we're not rushing it but let's create what that login experience could look like over here so you know imagining what the user experience might look like someone just pressed the login button you have a few different options you can take them to a completely different screen which is an option or you can just have that kind of pop up and you know have the information right there. So we'll do that. Now, what we probably don't wanna do for this particular login modal is introduce more color, right? So we probably don't wanna do blue or yellow or white. Probably wanna keep it fairly dark. So we're gonna go ahead and drop this. Maybe we'll add a bit of a border. Might not need it, but we'll see. We can round at the edges just a little bit, not too much, maybe eight. And then we can potentially add a shadow behind it, but what we're also probably going to do is add another overlay here. So something to the effect of, I don't know, if, I don't know how much I like that, but something like that, right? So we'll have our login screen, we'll have our overlay so it blocks out some of that information behind it. Possibly, we'll see. Uh, and then on here, we're gonna actually have the, the fields where a user can log in. So in terms of those fields, email, password. Don't need too much on a login screen. Um, you know, the option to forget, if you forgot your password, you can reset it and that sort of thing. So 
for the fields, now we already have some fields set up, right? We have this one here. You have to ask yourself, do you want to continue with that style on this login, uh, you know, the, the little pop-up window, or do you want to go for something a bit more traditional? Let's go ahead and copy this and see what that looks like if we pop it in here, right? So we don't need this button. Email address, definitely need that. And then down here would be password. Now for the icon, let's go ahead and sw sw uh, swap back over to Nucleo. Let's look up something like lock. I'm gonna use this rounder one or the squircle looking one only because the email icon is kind of that same shape. So we wanna keep it fairly consistent. There we go. And I'm gonna get rid of the message one. Perfect. And then down below, we might also want, like I mentioned, that option to, uh, if you forgot your password. And that can go in various places. It can go on the left hand or the right hand side, the left hand side. And we'll also want our button to actually log in. Now here's where, you know, the user experience really starts to come into play, right? So we have a button here. We might want to do it full width to match the fields. We might want to make it a little bit shorter. We might also want to include a button to sign up if you haven't done so already. A lot of different things you have to think about. But the reason I'm bringing this up, I'm not sure about that blue. Yellow could work. Now, if you're going to do yellow, you definitely want a darker color for the text. Yeah, I might want to bring this back. I think this could be interesting. I mean, it's not bad. But, you know, again, one thing you want to think about is, you know, if your email fields are completely rounded, do you also want your buttons completely rounded? Possibly, possibly not. You definitely want to make sure that there's a differentiation between your text fields and your button so that users are not getting those mixed up. Now, I think, you know, we've done a pretty good job. The, oh, social logins. Thank you, Umarcorn. Very good. I like that. Um, completely forgot about that. Uh, we, I think we've done a pretty good job at, at differentiating these. We have white email fields, and then they also have icons and copy in the middle. But if you wanted to, you can always just bring these back just to really help separate them, right? Or is that too much? No, I think that's perfect because a lot of people these days do, uh, you know, sign up to services and log in using things like Facebook and Twitter and all that fun stuff. So we can bring this back a little bit. And on this side, log in with, um, I don't know, Twitter. That's a bit too long. Um, what you can also do is possibly, let's do this actually, because there might be several services, right? So this one, we might want to do, make sure that this is, 57 is a terrible number, don't use that. Um, we might want to, how would we do this? We could do maybe white, and then on the inside, we'll just put the icons. Now, if you don't have access to an icon library, for example, you can use a plugin. So if we go back to our icons for design plugin, we can do something like Twitter and boop. There we go. Now, what I was thinking earlier when I was trying to figure out the color, you know, Twitter is obviously this light blue, right? And that could potentially work here, but some colors may not work very well in this kind of environment. But let's see. So Facebook is a darker blue. It's starting to blend in a little bit, right? What other networks are there? Is MySpace, does people use, still, still use MySpace? Probably not. Um, Google, I usually have like an orange or yellow button. Something like, well, Google Plus doesn't still exist. Uh, I guess just the G, right? There we go. Bring that down. I think it's more of a yellow. Now we don't want to go too yellow because then we don't want to mix it up with our login button. More things to think about. And then maybe we can do one more. I'm gonna snap this over and just make this line up nicely. And I guess we'll do Facebook, but we're, we're gonna run into a problem where it's gonna blend in a little bit. 
I guess that could do if we bring out some of that saturation. Uh, right, now it's called meta, which I don't know what their log... Do they have different login buttons? I have no idea. I haven't looked that up yet. They probably will at some point. Now, what I might do in this case, just because we have, at the moment, Twitter and Facebook right beside each other, I might want to move Facebook over to the right and then Google kind of in the middle to separate. But if you're designing an actual service, also I'm going to visually center this F. If you're designing an actual service, you might want to prioritize the buttons based on what people typically log in with. So, you know, Facebook might be first, Twitter might be second, and Google might be third. Who knows, right? More things to think about. So I'm going to place all of these into a group. Call it social. I'm going to turn a stack on and then view. Perfect. Umicorn saying, I don't like the name, probably um, in reference to meta. It's it's interesting. Um, I have many thoughts on meta and all that stuff, but I'll save those for another day. All right, that's looking good. Now, what we can also do, because someone might click on the login button and then not know exactly what to do from this point, maybe they don't have an account and they want to sign up, right below, oops, Change that to white. Don't have an account. Sign up. Now for this one, for sign up, we want users to be able to click on this. So we're gonna go ahead and underline it so it looks like a link. I might, it's a little bit too strong, so I'm going to just drop it to Museo Sans 900. I think that could work. It's still nice and bold. It's just not as bold as it was before, which could work. And then, like I mentioned, the forgot password. Now this we're going to make quite a bit smaller. And we can either place it here. We can place it on this side. I kind of like it on the right side, so it's not you know, right where someone's trying to tap when they're entering their password or they're, you know, they could misclick and, you know, click that forgot password by mistake. So I'm going to pop it on the right hand side. I'm going to underline it so it's a link. Now these look a little bit large, but, you know, we'll run with it for now. And then finally, we need a way to close this particular pop up, right? Let me make sure, whoops. I'm gonna group all of this. There we go. Bring this in a little bit. Now here we might want, you know, a very quick text line, log into Something like this. And, you know, in this case, we could potentially explore maybe bringing that logo back in, or you can we can actually bring in maybe just the, the simple logo. Do something like this, make it a little bit smaller. I don't know if I love it, but we can definitely continue to explore that a little bit later on. And then just to make my life a little bit easier, if I do something like close, I'm going to just copy this, pop it in here at the top, change it to white. And then to wrap things up, like I mentioned earlier, we might want to include this either in an overlay or a component. So very quickly before Kyle T. Webster takes over and definitely stick around for that stream, I'm going to copy all of this. I'm going to create a new state for the login button, it's going to be called login. And then inside here, I'm going to paste this information. And then from the hover state, we want to make sure I'm going to go more in depth with components next week, but we're going to transition to our login state. No animation. And then from here, if someone clicks on the close button, it transitions back to our default state. So one more time, if I play it, we have our splash page that we created today, our logo, our text, our email field, 
our login button with our lovely little hover effect and our actual fields here so they can log in. I kind of like this style. It's nice and bold, it's really in your face, it's modern, it's easy to read, and then close. So that is going to wrap it up for me for today. A big thank you to everyone who has tuned in. Definitely stick around for Kyle T. Webster coming up next. I will be back next week continuing this process. We are going to be tackling the home screen. But until then, thanks everyone, and I'll see you next time.